You're listening to The Sizzle on Iron Skillet Radio and Iron Skillet Television. <laughs> Pressure coming. He's hit. And down he goes. Blitzing linebacker Roquan Smith. We're not talking about him enough. We need to be talking about him more. This is his first time on the list. His first time on the list? Gosh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he should have been on the list. The Buccaneers know a thing or two about top 100 caliber linebacker play. Put you on your head, boy. In last year's top 100 interview, Devin White had this to say. Man, Roquan, I mean, like, he's one of those guys that stick out to me, like, when you say linebacker. I watched him last year, and he was so good. He deserved a lot more credit than what he received. The same could be said this year. After White's interview, Roquan Smith didn't make the 2021 list. But he's on in 2022. He got relentless pursuit to the bottom. Being able to tackle all over the field. He's playing like an all pro right now for Chicago. Any chance he gets to try to whisper something in the ear, say something to him, and put some fear into somebody, he's gonna take advantage of it. Seven one, it's hard to block me. It's hard to block me. Rokorn pop out on the screen all the time, shooting gaps, making plays. He definitely got respect out of me. Screen, screen. <laughs> We're going to be the face of the linebackers of the league coming soon. Hammy, we're cooking with grease. We're cooking with grease. We're cooking with grease. We get a score right here now. It's going to be it's gonna be cooking with grease. Oh, yeah, that's, that's one of his things. That's when we're getting hot. We starting, to, we starting to pick up on what the offense is doing, so we're cooking with grease. Let's go. We're cooking with grease. We're cooking with grease. Let's get a touchdown right here. Then we're cooking with grease. Moving like grease lightning, Smith topped 160 tackles for the first time. Roquan Smith, I've been using the word marauder. He has been punishing people, punishing. He's like a rabbit with dynamite in his mouth, right? It's all over the place. As soon as he finds what he wants, boom! And the ball carries the carrot. That, that, that's, I, 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 I like that. I like him a lot. Mike D and the Bucks are not alone. Enough players like Smith to put him on the top 100. And if he keeps playing like this, he probably won't miss the list again anytime soon. 20, 10, 5, end zone! Touchdown! Touchdown Bears for Roquan Smith! It's happening for Skip's Cowboys. I don't, because Jerry Jones had an opportunity in the offseason, Skip, to get high-value linebackers, Zadaria Smith, Von Miller, um, B. Wags from Seattle, and not give up compensation, not give up draft capital. All, all different kinds all, of players, but, but I got it. But yeah. here's the thing, Skip. B. Wags is the exact linebacker Roquan Smith. He's a seven-time first-team All-Pro. He's an eight-time Pro Bowler. Basically, he and um, Aaron Donald mm -hmm. are been the preeminent guys on the All-Pro team on the defensive side. We did get Anthony Barr, <laughs> but, but go ahead. Yeah, I don't think Anthony Barr is quite no, in those no. equations. But, Skip, you're looking at a 25-year-old middle linebacker. Over the last two seasons, he's been a second-team All-Pro both of those seasons. He is a guy that if you bring him on, he's a three-down linebacker. You can then, then switch uh, uh, Michael Parsons back to his natural spot. You can play him at Willie or Skip. You can say, you know what, Michael? We're going to go on and put you on that edge and let you, you do what you do like a T.J. Watt. We're going to let you be a Vaughn Miller. We're going to let you be one of these edge guys that all you do occasionally, we'll drop you in the flat, play hook the flat. Mm -hmm. But more times than not, mm -hmm. we want you to go linebacker, I mean quarterback honey. Thank you. That's what they could do. But Skip, he's looking. We see what Darius, oh, excuse me. We see what Shaquille Griff, <laughs> or Leonard got last year. Five years, 99 million. Fred Warner, five years, 95 million. So he's going to be looking in that range of about $20 million a year. I don't think Jerry Jones is willing to go to that number and give up draft capital in order to get him. Should they? Yes. Will they? No. Knowing the Jerry Jones, like you said yesterday, you believe Jerry Jones is out of the big market business of getting high value free agents. Deion Sanders, he made the splash with T.O., 
but really he's been relatively quiet mm -hmm. over the last couple of years. They talk about develop, draft, and develop. This is already a proven commodity. He's already been drafted. He's already developed. He's one of the premier middle linebackers in all of football. It's been a long time since you had a guy like this. A three-down player, a very good player, and he's only 25 years of age. But the number that he's trying to get to as far as monetarily, I don't believe Jerry Jones will go to that number. They say you could probably get him for a third-round pick. I don't know about that. Maybe a second-round pick. But I think the number, the dollar value, mm -hmm. is what's going to scare Jerry Jones away. And so I don't believe it's going to happen. But would he change the fortunes? Absolutely, because now you get to switch Micah and put him in his natural habitat. Thank you. <laughs> would Roquan Smith scare Shannon Sharp? Yeah. Yes, he would. <laughs> Jerry, are you listening? Okay. I'm about to tell you why I believe this time this speculation has some merit, okay. has some legs, has some value, has some distinct possibility. I believe that Jerry's viewpoint has switched on his football team. I believe slowly but surely he is realizing he's going to have to win it with his defense as opposed to his offense. That's not what he's been saying. He's been saying Zeke's going to be the focal point and okay, we're going to... But that's... Him, <laughs> that's Jerry talking on. Emmitt okay. Smith's been saying that as sort of the you know, ambassador for the Dallas Cowboys. Okay. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying completely back into Dak Prescott. You're going to have to convince me <laughs> to make me a believer. You're going to have to reconvince. But I'm here to say I got two shots this year. Number one, I got, as Jen just said, the man I call 11 from heaven. And by the way, I just purchased his jersey. Just a little hint for what you might have to deal with on this show. <laughs> because oh, I don't? need me an 11. Once upon a time, I despised 11 for the Dallas Cowboys because Danny White wore it. And <laughs> he was a disaster following Roger Staubach. Good guy, but disaster on the field. Well, I, I mean, he was, he was okay, Skip. He, he, I mean, he, he had, his, had his moments. But he followed Roger, so. That, you you that's... just can't. You can't win. He was in a can't win. <laughs> But now I'm in a can-win situation right. with 11 from heaven. I believe however far my team goes will be propelled by Micah Parsons okay. and the defense and Dan Quinn, who was the assistant coach of the year last year in the National Football League. And you cannot convince me otherwise from the fact that I believe he did stay in Dallas because he got some sort of handshake agreement from Jerry you are next to be my head coach. Okay. I thought he was going to be head coach last year. Silly me. I think it could happen sooner than later. I hope it doesn't happen in the middle of this year because that's not Jerry's way, number one. But that would mean this year would go completely off the deep end, okay. right? Yes. Okay. So if the focus is now on the other side of the football, if, if we all believe, as Jerry, I believe, in his heart and soul believes that Emmett, I'm sorry, Emmett, that the Zeke is on his last legs, that this is his swan song in Dallas. This is his last hurrah, that he's going to be eminently cuttable after yet another disappointing season as his yards per game continue to fall for the seventh straight year. If that's the case, it's going to expose Dak a little bit more. I don't think they can completely trust the aging offensive line with the newcomers in, in various key spots. Okay. And the point is that it's, it's all defense. It's all Dan Quinn. It's all 11 from heaven. It's all about strengthening your strength. So this kind of maneuver, as long shot as it might be, this isn't a splash move because Rokon Smith is not a big name to me, right? Right. He's not a superstar name. No, no. But he's he, just a quality. He he's a, better than anything they got he, in that you know position. What? He is a football player. Yeah, absolutely. He is a plugger, a banger, a baller. He him. just <laughs> plays yeah. football right. the way you're supposed to play right. football. Again, we're going to talk about our man Baker Mayfield, my man Baker Mayfield, a little later. But th that Georgia game against Oklahoma and that national semifinal, he's just all over the field. I'm yeah. saying, well, well, that that guy can flat out play at the next level. Right. And he went, what, 10th overall to Correct. the Bears. Yes. So now he's unhappy. I'm slightly concerned that he's he's represented by some guy who's not even approved by the NFL. Well, he had Todd France. Yeah. He fired Todd France because uh, they, uh, for whatever reason, Skip, they weren't able to get the strike the long-term deal that he thought he deserved this offseason. So he fired this guy, and then he hired a guy that's not certified. Not cert Make sure that you follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Iron Skillet Sports. And remember to like, share, and subscribe to Iron Skillet Sports on YouTube at Iron Skillet Sports.